So a few helpful hints before we dig in into some examples. One is the, that the ICR for breakfast is almost always stronger than the rest of the day. Just remembering that most people will need more insulin for breakfast carbs uh, than the rest of the day. And what works for lunch may or may not work for dinner. Most of the times, again, higher insulin for carbs for breakfast only, but the rest of the day, all day, lunch, dinner, and snack is almost the same insulin to carb ratio. Most of the times, again, in some people, they might actually need a little bit more for dinner. Uh, it depends on what else is going on. Uh, but they may need a little bit less for dinner or the lunch will be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Uh, but most of the times, I would say just to keep it simple in the beginning, in general, more insulin for the carbs for breakfast because the body is more resistant to insulin at that time. And then the rest of the day, one insulin to carb ratio should work okay, at least to start with. The insulin to carb ratio does not change much with age. Uh, it might actually be, you know, one unit for 20 grams in an infant or one unit for 25 grams. Uh, but then it changes very slowly to get to one unit for 10 and 15 grams. All right, what about the concept of pure events? Uh, again, we're going to spend just a couple of minutes on this because it's really important. Uh, in order to assess and calculate ISF and ICR, we need to look for those pure events. And there are four different criteria uh, that will make a complete or, an, or a really good pure event or a pure, pure event. Uh, one is that it's a single dose for a meal or a correction. Uh, and the second is that it's preceded by a stable CGM trace for at least one hour. So CGM tracing meaning blood sugar that's not rising and it's not dropping, it's just stable. It doesn't have to be in range, it can be anywhere, uh, but at least it's stable for a minimum of one hour. And then the third criteria is that it's followed by no other events for three to four hours after that. So there's no more snacking after that, no carbs, no boluses, no corrections, and no exercise. And you can getting the sense how difficult it is to actually find those pure events, and particularly if you're dealing with children. But we do the best we can. Uh, and then Finally, it's a good stable basal rate in the background. So the changes in the basal rate are not contributing to the changes in the blood sugar. It's purely an effect of the bolus that we're giving. And that's why, that's how we're gonna focus on is the bolus enough or too much or too little. So we need to have that basal background to be steady and not contributing to the changes in the blood sugar. Um, all right, so let's see how we can evaluate the insulin to carb ratio. Again, uh, here's a pure event. That's a very nice event right here uh, where there's nothing going on and the insulin to carb ratio, the insulin bolus, the, the bolus for the carbs worked beautifully here and, and the blood sugar is nice to target. Again, after each one of these, uh, it's generally speaking not bad and especially for breakfast, maybe you can see a trend going rising a little bit higher here. The more he eats, the higher he goes and finally hit the purple here, suggesting that perhaps the insulin to carb ratio for breakfast is working well, but the insulin to carb ratio for the rest of the day could use a little bit of an increase right there. And, and that's also you know, illustrated by increasing the basal rate on top of the boluses. So maybe, yeah, he does need a little bit higher insulin to carb ratio. And I think there's uh, one other opportunity here, which is uh, called the, the pre-bolusing. You know, we always look for those opportunities. We do the calculations, but it comes back to behavior and just you know, connecting with the patients and, and, and demonstrating the positives and showing them what's working and what's not working. The reason this is working so beautifully with the breakfast here is that because there was a, a nice pre-bolus for the breakfast. And I'm gonna blow that up in here and show you that this is the bolus here for 41 grams given at 7.46 a.m. And if you look at the CGM tracing, you will see that the blood sugar started rising here very quickly at 8.14 a.m. So this is really when he, when he actually ate the breakfast, but he bolus 30 minutes before breakfast. And because of that, there was no big spike after breakfast. The insulin was ready, it had enough time to work. And we end up with just a little spike in the green and then coming back right down to about 100 uh, in target for the next two or three hours. Again, going over this and showing them that it pays off uh, and to see this and provide the positive reinforcement and the visual impact of no purple, no red, it's all in green and it's working beautifully. Uh, and the insulin to carb ratio and the corrections work very well in this patient. 
Uh, there was actually a little bit of a correction here, even though it's in range, but uh, because it's around 150, there was a tiny bit of correction. All right, so how do we calculate the insulin to carb ratio? Uh, we have 10 minutes, let's go over a few examples of that. Uh, let's see, 30 grams for this bolus because this was a double bolus, 15 grams here and 15 grams behind it. So the total was 30 grams. The total, the two boluses combined was 1.9 units. And then the blood sugar went up and it required another bolus of 0 0.9. 0 0.9, this is a correction one to bring it back down to where we started. And we can see that the combination of this and the extra correction bolus here and the extra insulin basal that was given here, combined all of these things were enough to cover the 30 grams that were, that were eaten here. And that's basically what says all of this insulin was, was just right to cover this meal, to cover the 30 grams, because the blood sugar went up and went back down to where it started. It started here and ended up almost at the same number. Nice level line here. So all of these together, combined cover the 30 grams. So what do we do with all of this? 1.9 and 0.9, that's 2.8. And I actually estimated that this was an extra 0.2 to 0.3 unit of extra insulin, extra basal that needed to be given right here. This is closed loop that's responding to the spike in the blood sugar. And combined together, this was about three units all together. Three units for 30 grams were perfect to cover it. That means the insulin to carb ratio is one unit for 10, not one unit for 11 like it actually, or I think there was 12 uh, in, in this case. Uh, so one unit for 12 is too weak and it looks like one to 10 should be about right. And we change the insulin to carb ratio to one to 10. And for the next day or a couple of days later, we got 25 grams breakfast, 2.5 units for the breakfast because that's one to 10. And there was no other boluses after that no adjustments in the basal rate after that. It was just the set basal in the background and blood sugar went up and came back down to almost where it started. Not quite, so perhaps can use a little bit more, maybe one for nine, but we'll leave this for now because I think we gotta look at other days and see if it's working or not. Not too bad, again, uh, looks pretty good. We look at the, you know, a few days later, we actually look at two days in a row and it looks like it's working. Again, here's the breakfast ratio. Uh, here's the lunch ratio and it seems like it's working just fine. Maybe a little bit more here. Uh, this one looks like it's working just fine again. So I'm actually happy with this and I'll just leave it alone. One to 10 seems to work okay. One to 10 seems to work okay. One to 10 or one to... All right, how about calculating the ICR with this example? Now, this is an older child, an adolescent who wakes up in the morning, has a very nice steady basal rate here working out all night, wakes up in the morning, eats a little snack in the morning and forgets to bolus for it. There's no bolus, but sugar rises. And then at lunchtime, she eats 40 grams and then she gets her bolus. This 40 grams actually included the bol this bolus included a, uh, uh, an insulin dose for the 40 grams and included a correction. And I think let's see, let's make sure we confirm that. Yes, Wallace included eight units for 40 grams, that's one for five, and a correction of two units, uh, but combined together, let's see if we have that red line over there. Yes, combined together, this bolus total 10 units was enough to cover the, the carbs and bring it right back down to where it started. Yes, it was not effective to bring the blood sugar all the way down to target here. It wasn't enough to bring it down, uh, but the reality is that the combined 10 units, the eight units for the carbs and the two units for the correction, total together was perfect for covering all of the carbs because the blood sugars went back down to where it started. That gives us an idea that 10 units is good for 40 grams, not eight units, it should be 10. So instead of one for five, this patient actually needs one for four. And we can try one for four grams and see if that works any better. But again, not just one event, look for two or three more events like this and confirm that the calculation is really one to four uh, and, and then change the, change the insulin to carb ratio. Uh, here, here's the, the concept of combined events. So again, if we can't find just a single event uh, with nothing else, but, you know, after or before, then if we have two events in a row, but they meet the criteria because we have a steady CGM before that, uh, then we have 
a steady basal rate across the whole time. And there's nothing. We have almost eight hours with no action after that, after this meal here. And the next one comes eight hours later. Well, that's a good one to look at. Uh, we combine these two and make them into a single event and you say, okay, what happened to the blood sugar after this? And we can see that the trend here is really going up actually, uh, suggesting that the insulin to carb ratio for these two meals was not enough. Now, do we know which one wasn't enough? Is it the breakfast ratio of 21 grams here or the bolus for the 45 grams here, which happens after 9 a.m.? This is not a 9 a.m. line. Uh, so the ratio typically in children, again, we change the ratio to breakfast uh, before 9 a.m. And most people eat breakfast before 9. And then after 9 a.m., we change the ratio. So is this ratio different than this? Which one is not enough? We can see that actually it's going up but we don't know which one is not enough. And we just have to look at that another day and say, we have a sense that the insulin to carb ratio is not enough, but let's find another event where it might tell us. And we don't have to go too far because it's right here. In the evening at 6 p.m. for dinner, there's a 59 gram and a bolus for that. And yes, we don't have a steady CGM for an hour. We have a drop here, but before that it was pretty steady. Um, going nicely here. So there's not much exercise. There's not much effect of a beta rate. There's no other boluses right here. And we can see that after dinner, the trends is going up again. So perhaps it's the daytime lunch and dinner carb ratio that's not enough. And we can make this adjustment. So we look at this and we say, what's your carb ratio for this one? And then let's make an adjustment based on that. And then we can come back another day when you say, can we find a day when you had only breakfast and nothing else within the next three to four hours? And then we make an assessment for the breakfast ratio separately. And I hope this kind of makes sense. All right, uh, where is this one? Evaluating ICR combined events. Again, just you know, a, a general quick look at the combined event. You know, in the previous slide we had two, right here we actually have three. Uh, all together, you know, clumped together here, uh, but no other events for the next four hours. No big changes in the basal rate here, even though with the closed loop system. Uh, so that's an indication as a general sense, that the insulin to carb ratio, the boluses for all these three meals is actually pretty good and it worked really nicely. And again, snacking and eating and bolusing, and it's all in green right here. So big, big sense of insulin to carb ratios are working just fine in this patient. And the basal rates are working just fine at night. This is midnight right here. And you can see that the basal rate is working great actually. Uh, so we don't need to make a lot of changes. We just congratulate these patients and say, you're doing great, you're doing awesome, counting the carbs and bolusing for everything. Uh, so in summary, the CGM is awesome. Uh, without the CGM, we would never be able to do any of this. Uh, detailed daily views can be full of actionable information. And then fix, fix the basal rates first. If you don't have the basal rate working just right, you're never going to be able to tell is the insulin to carb ratio not enough or is it the basal that's not enough and there's no way to tease those apart. So do the basal first and then attack the insulin to carb ratios and the ISF. And then look for pure events, not just one event, like I said, three or four times in a row. And even with automated insulin delivery, we still need to review and optimize all the settings. So it's important to know your patients, to trust them, and then and, and don't feel bad about asking. You say, for the next few days, I'm gonna ask you for some extra work. I need you to do this for me. 